Okay guys, this podcast is gonna be all about salt and sodium and all the myths about salt. We made a salt-based electrolyte and one of the most common things I hear is, wow, it has a thousand milligrams of sea salt in it. Is that gonna, that's gonna lead to hypertension. My doctor told me to avoid salt. It is complete bullshit and we're gonna get into detail in this podcast episode, everything about salt, the history of it, what it does in the body, why the recommendations are bullshit, why salt does not lead to hypertension, its benefits for athletic performance, just everything about salt. This is a great episode to show maybe if you're, you know, if you're putting some of our electrolytes or sea salt in your water, you're using plenty of salt and maybe your parents are like, oh, you're gonna get a heart attack or you're gonna get hypertension or maybe they're trying to lower their sodium levels for some reason because their doctor told them based on extremely outdated, just wrong information. This is a great episode to show them. And I'm doing it because of our electrolytes. They have so many benefits. People are hitting us up saying these are benefiting their athletic performance. And we're gonna get into why that is in this episode. So let's get into salt. Why I'm interested in this is because from an anthropological perspective, it doesn't make any sense that salt would be bad for us. As human beings, we crave salt. Without salt, you would die. There have been wars fought over salt. As a human being, I mean, you know it, you've probably felt it, the craving for salt. So we're gonna get into the details right now. Let's start with the current perception on salt consumption, just in general, what the Western traditional medical doctor thinks of salt consumptions and our dietary guidelines. So with our dietary guidelines, the USDA recommends that you don't eat more than 2,300 milligrams or 2.3 grams of sodium per day. Um, and according to the CDC, more than 50% of the people in the United States are currently monitoring their sodium intake because they've spread this lie that you shouldn't consume more than basically two grams of salt per day. So there's a lot of people being monitored and you know monitoring themselves and saying, oh, I'm trying to limit my sodium intake. You hear it all the time. People go out to eat, they say, oh, there's a lot of salt in that. Like that's the bad thing. It's crazy. So a lot of people, 25% um, of people are being told by a health professional to curb their consumption of sodium and we are going to get into why that is complete bullshit. The main thing, why do people think that salt leads to hypertension? This is the really, really common thing you hear. And this has happened for about 40 years. The government and all of the nation's leading health associates have told people that consuming salt is going to increase your blood pressure, and thus it's gonna lead to high blood pressure and lead to hypertension. Here is the truth about that. There was never any sound scientific evidence to support that salt leads to high blood pressure or hypertension. So how did this even happen? So a recent actual report from the U.S. Surgeon General admitted there is no evidence that a low salt diet will prevent the increase in blood pressure that often occurs with advancing age. So our own U.S. Surgeon General is saying, okay, there's really no evidence here. How this happened is there was the salt blood pressure hypothesis and basically to measure blood pressure in different ways, uh, the top uh, you know, reading and the number when you get your blood pressure done is your systolic blood pressure. And this is the pressure in your arteries during contraction of your heart. And the bottom number that you all see is your diastolic blood pressure. So this is the pressure in your arteries when your heart is relaxed. When we eat salt, we get thirsty. So we drink more water. It's basically a regulation of your thirst mechanism. And in the salt high blood pressure hypothesis, that excess salt then causes the body to hold onto that increased water. So in order to dilute the saltiness of the blood, uh, they say that the resulting increase in blood volume would automatically lead to high blood pressure. Why might this be wrong? Evidence in actual medical literature, if you want more info on this, read the book, The Salt Fix by Dr. James DeNicolantonio. So he details here, 80% of people with normal blood pressure, which if you're listening to this and you're young, you probably have normal blood pressure, are not sensitive to the effects, the blood pressure raising effects of salt. Now we get into people with pre-hypertension. 75% of those people are not sensitive to the blood pressure raising effects of ingesting salt. Even people with full-blown hypertension, 55%, are totally immune to salt's effects on your blood pressure. So how did this even happen? Like if, if blood, if ingestion of salt is not raising blood pressure, how did we really get to this place where the government is telling you salt raises your blood pressure? Okay, so here's how we really got there and it's about osmoregulation. So when you ingest salt, here is what happens. When you ingest salt, 
it's dissolved into your blood and other bodily fluids through you know water and salt is going to dissociate into ion, different ions forming Na which is sodium and Co which is chlorine. So these are the ions that are in highest concentrations in your blood compared to other electrolytes such as potassium, magnesium, or calcium which have tons of benefits but we're just talking salt right now. So what happens then is the water and sodium levels in your body are constantly balancing each other out. This is called osmoregulation. And this process of osmoregulation has basically gotten confused because osmoregulation does lead to slight changes in blood pressure, but it's not bad whatsoever. It's actually good. It's just a normal process of the human body. But a lot of times in health, when we can see these biomarkers of, oh my God, when people ingest salt, their blood pressure goes up a bit. We try to make you know, assumptions and claims and correlations based on that. When in reality, salt isn't bad at all. And the process of osmoregulation, when you ingest salt, your body just basically bounces itself out, is not bad whatsoever. So we just have bad science here and bad recommendations. You don't have to worry about salt, even if you have prehypertension. And if you're healthy, you especially don't need to worry about it. So your kidney is gonna filter between 3.2 and 3.6 pounds of salt per day which is about 150 times the amount of salt that we ingest per day. For perspective, most health agencies still tell you that, you know, consuming over 2.3 grams of salt per day is bad and you're gonna die, yet our kidneys filter out this amount of salt every five minutes. So it's really horrible recommendations and they just don't make sense from a physiological viewpoint. So salt cravings, which we all get, are biologically normal. So scientists have found that across all populations, when they're left to an unrestricted sodium consumption, so you know they're not being told, hey, limit your salt, they usually eat around four grams of salt per day. When you're not being told, hey, and you have access to you know, food, you're gonna eat about four grams of salt per day. This amount holds true for people across multiple different climates, hemispheres, cultures, socioeconomic backgrounds. Four grams of salt per day are what a lot of people are just ingesting. Yet our government says, no, you need a half that amount, basically. So it's pretty crazy. We know that the, basically human beings are gravitating towards around a similar amount of salt consumption across the world. Four grams, about four grams. So the body speaks for itself, and I think you should definitely listen to that. Obviously, there are issues, you know, people are consuming maybe a mega amount of salt without sweating at all which has never happened in society because in order to get food, you'd probably need to exercise and sweat. I think that's a big issue. But when we get into more about salt and human evolution, there's a common misconception that we evolved from a low salt diet. I hear this a lot and being somebody who has a degree in anthropology, it's just immediately right off the top bullshit. Um, there was a paper in the 1985 New England Journal of Medicine, which estimated during the Paleolithic era our intake of sodium was around a gram per day. Uh, the issue with this data is that it did not, you know, include sodium that would have been obtained from really common food sources. So they just massively underestimated this um, because, yeah, they just missed the mark there. There's no way our ancestors were consuming, you know, less than a gram of salt per day. We craved salt. We would seek salt out, okay? Um, and a lot of uh, sodium is found in foods, including muscle tissue, blood, marrow, organs, which a lot of these traditional cultures have been consuming for a long time. Um, and we know some of this. We have data on some of this. Australian Aborigines uh, will eat about two to three kilograms of meat per sitting after a kill. And right there, you're going to get about 3.5 grams of sodium. So people will find a way to get to this about four gram mark no matter what. What have we learned so far? Salt is needed to maintain the optimal health of the, uh, the optimal amount of blood in your body. And what salt is basically doing is helping your heart pump blood throughout your body. It's also essential for digestion. It's needed for cell to cell communication and function. It's crucial for bone formation. It's crucial, crucial for strength and muscle function. Salt is crucial for prevention of dehydration. Let me say that again. Salt helps your body not get dehydrated. This is very confusing for a lot of people and we'll get into it more, but if you are just drinking water stripped of all, all minerals whatsoever, you can get into some really dehydrated states and severe lack of performance states. What your body wants to rehydrate is actually a mixture of H2O and minerals. It's not just H2O. 
your body is hydrated through minerals. So you don't want to just ingest water. You want to ingest water with minerals, which is salt. Um, salt is also critical for the function of your reproductive system. It's essential for nerve impulses from organs to your heart and brain. So without sodium intake, our blood volume will go down, which will lead down to shutting down of certain organs, such as your brain and kidneys. Without salt, you die, okay? So to say that uh, ingesting more than two grams of it is just gonna kill you, it's ridiculous. And now we get into, if you're listening to this, you're probably in this camp, salt and athletes. So if you work out and you're an athlete and you're sweating, it's even more important that you get salt. This is obvious, you know, if you're listening to this, and next time you're sweating, go like this. It's gonna taste salty. Why is that? Well, you're sweating out minerals, okay? So what we have realized is players can lose, um, they did a study, oh, here we go, one hour of soccer practice. So you're gonna lose about 1.9 grams. Some people lose six grams of sodium during that practice. So hard sweat for a one hour game, they lost a lot of sodium. So you are losing sodium when you're sweating. I think this is obvious for many people. People know this. Gatorade with all its electrolyte marketing. What do you lose when you sweat? You need to replace it. And this is gonna compromise your muscle function because sodium plays an essential role in the contraction and relaxation of your muscles. And this doesn't mean just like flexing a muscle and relaxing it. This is just done when you move, every time you move, when you're walking, but especially when you're sprinting, when you're really engaged in some hard exercise, the contraction of your muscles is key. And the better this functions, the better your athletic performance is going to be. And this is really where a lot of these electrolyte supplements came from. This came from, you know, the Florida football team doing these spring training, you know, uh, practices and stuff in the heat in Florida and the humidity, and they were losing so much sweat and they were just being given water and their players would cramp up. It would severely mess with their team. And so they figured out a way to create Gatorade for the Florida Gators. And it was a drink that had five grams of salt and the sugar is estimated at seven grams which is way lower than it is today at 50 grams and not a lot of salt. And that is what the players are drinking to rehydrate themselves. So, and then we see this explosion in salt-based electrolytes, USA powerlifting team sponsored by a salt-based electrolyte because it does help your muscles. So when your muscle contracts, calcium flows into your muscle cells. A lot of people think of calcium as like some, you know, uh, bone-like thing with dairy, I guess, like that's a good way to describe it. A lot of people think of calcium like your bones, but it's really an electrolyte. Calcium is an electrolyte, so it's also involved in your muscles. So this causes your muscles to contract. Sodium ions are then pumped out of the muscle cells that allow the muscles to relax. So this contraction and relaxation is really key, and this is controlled by what is called the sodium-potassium pump. This uses energy to move sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell. This is also why potassium is so key, why we threw potassium in our Santa Cruz Paleo electrolytes, why we have our magnesium potassium capsules. Are these them? Yeah, right here. Why is this? You need to have potassium. You need to have a good ratio of potassium to magnesium. You need to have you know, good minerals from sea salt. So without enough sodium in the body, muscle function is impaired. This leads to severe decreased athletic performance. Studies have shown that low sodium levels can contribute to muscle fatigue and weakness. And on the other hand, consuming adequate levels of sodium helps performance, helps athletic performance, and helps muscle function, muscle contraction. So what have we learned here? In our nervous system, sodium is involved in a lot of stuff. Um, in the literature, you see this called uh, propagation of action potentials. To simplify this for you guys, it's basically the communication between your nerve cells and your muscle cells, which is really crucial. If you're doing a bicep curl, your brain is communicating to your body and your nerves and your muscles to contract that muscle and then basically relax it as you hit the eccentric. So this is really crucial and yes, salt is involved in that. So then we get into some of the aspects of muscle endurance. So when we're doing endurance exercise or longer form exercise, maybe you're at a basketball practice, you're at soccer practice, you're at football practice, or you're just hitting a hard workout, you're losing a lot of sweat um, and sodium intake helps improve the actual endurance performance by reducing cramping and enhancing hydration. We all know that you can cramp up. Everyone's probably felt a cramp. What's really going on there? Uh, well, when sodium is consumed along with other fluids, it helps the absorption of the fluids in the small intestine, which very 
rapidly increases hydration levels. So this helps athletes maintain proper fluid bounce. The reason you get muscle cramps is actually because of fluid bounce. It's not just because, you know, oh, you haven't consumed enough water necessarily. It's that you haven't consumed enough water with electrolytes to get this good fluid bounce. And it's also gonna boost recovery after exercise. So it's important after exercise to get enough fluid and electrolytes in to aid the recovery process. Uh, there's studies on this that adequate sodium intake can speed up recovery time pretty significantly. Um, there's varying levels on different studies, but it's all significant. It all drives the needle. So I would absolutely recommend getting a good salt-based electrolyte or just adding some sea salt to your water, taking some magnesium potassium after your workout. Um, and we also see it reduce muscle soreness and inflammation, which can lead to faster recovery time. So especially if you're weightlifting, this is really key. And studies have shown that consuming sodium after exercise reduces markers of inflammation, such as interleukin-6 and C-reactive protein, which are common inflammatory markers that are correlated with muscle damage and soreness, all that. Typical salt forms. We have sodium chloride, which is basically lab-created salt. Um, you'll see a lot of times iodized salt is like table salt. Um, and then you got sodium chloride, and then you have sea salt. And in, in the camp of sea salt is Himalayan pink salt. We're talking salt from the earth. So those are some common forms of sea salt. Traditional table salt really loses a lot of its natural minerals during the processing of that salt. Um, they'll add you know, iodine to that. Uh, oftentimes they bleach them, and a lot of the iron, potassium, magnesium is lost in table salt. This is why I'm really not a fan of table salt. I'm not completely against it. If I'm at some like weird restaurant, maybe traveling and there's some table salt there, it's not like it's gonna you know kill you, but it's not like a, as healthy as a form of salt. Sea salt on the other hand is far more rich in these minerals, which are essential for your body and can't be really obtained through this processed bleached table salt. And sea salt is basically the better thing to consume. It's more of like a broad spectrum salt. So that is why in our electrolytes, wherever I put them, you'll see that we have sea salt and Himalayan pink salt. Why I went with this is I want a broad, you know, a broad combination of good salts in here. I didn't want to go with sodium chloride like some other companies use because why would I want a bleached stripped salt in my electrolyte? I want something that's rich in minerals. And then we basically add in magnesium glycinate, which is an amazing form of magnesium, and potassium citrate, which is a great form of potassium in there. So when you consume this, you're getting magnesium, you're getting potassium, and you're getting sea salt. I would still recommend supplementing with more magnesium and potassium. Um, you can get a good amount of potassium through your diet, avocados, bananas, sweet potatoes. I still take magnesium glycinate at night because what you'll notice is all the studies on magnesium, and we'll do another podcast episode on magnesium in of itself, you will feel so much better. Magnesium has been sort of sweeping, you know, TikTok and Instagram going really viral because it is one of those supplements where if you're severely deficient in magnesium and you start to take some magnesium glycinate, it is like flipping on a light switch. People just like rave about it because they're 70% of Americans are deficient in magnesium. So when you turn on some of those switches, you can imagine how good you would feel. I hope that covered a lot in there. Um, basically, sodium is gonna regulate the fluid levels in your body. It's gonna regulate basically the hydration in your blood. Um, when you eat salt, your body is gonna excrete sodium through urine to match the amount of salt you consume. You do not have to worry about consuming, you know, six, seven, eight grams of salt, especially if you're an athlete. That is about the amount that I like to hit. So I put, you know, two scoops of our electrolytes per day I'm probably consuming, that's two grams of sodium right there. Sometimes I'll just put a uh, little bit of sea salt in my water. And so it's probably gonna be another gram or so right there. And then with the food I'm eating, I'm probably gonna get like four grams. So I'm usually hitting around, you know, seven grams of sodium. When I'm hitting a lot of saunas, jujitsu practices, I'll up that amount a little bit and I feel amazing when I do that. So the amount of sodium in your body's fluid is gonna determine the volume of fluid in your body. Various sensors in your body located in your blood vessels, kidneys, and other organs basically detect changes in this fluid volume. Your body's not stupid. You're not gonna consume sodium and have you know, tons of issues with hypertension and all this shit. Your body knows what it's doing and we have consumed a good amount of salt forever. So that's another reason you just don't need to worry about the amount of salt you put on your food, all that. Um, and if your body does sense that the fluid volume is too high, your body is gonna trigger different mechanisms to adjust the amount of sodium that uh, is excreted in your urine. 
And these mechanisms are involved in changes in your kidney function, blood flow to the kidneys, and consumption of fluid in the kidneys. And there's also several hormonal pathways involved, such as um, aldosterone, uh, prostaglandins, all different types of stuff. If you wanna get deeper into this stuff, I think I've provided you with enough information for you to get deeper into it. But if you're a healthy human being, there's no reason to be limiting salt. You are not going to get hypertension. You're not gonna have blood pressure issues or heart issues from salt. And if you want more information, look up uh, The Salt Fix by Dr. James Antonio. That book goes extremely deep into here and I reference a lot of the stuff on here. Overall, don't worry about salt. It's so frustrating to me to see people be like, oh, I, I ate there, there's a lot of sodium in there, that's really gonna mess me up. No, you're dumb. A lot of these studies that are done on people that can that consume sodium, how are they done? Well, it's done on people that eat processed foods. So then they draw correlations from there, because guess what food has a lot of sodium? Packaged foods in the middle of the grocery store, chips with seed oils and sugar, McDonald's, Jack in the Box, bullshit. If you're eating grass-fed steak, chicken, you're working out, you are not in that camp. You don't need to read some study that correlates those fat, sick people with you. It's not the same. There have been wars fought over salt. Animals seek out salt. We are not different. Consume your salt, level up your performance. I hope this helped you. Comment below if you like this style of podcast where I'm diving way deeper into topics. Um, I'm gonna do more of them, you know? I think people really do like the like quick content in the grocery stores where I'm just not able to get in as deep. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to release this as a TikTok or an Instagram reel. So if you like this, just support it, subscribe, comment below, um, and yeah, get some good sea salt. Get our electrolytes on Amazon. They sell out quick. Type in Santa Cruz Paleo Electrolytes. Try a salt-based electrolyte. Stay hydrated. Appreciate you. Peace.